So thank you very much for joining the DEPCONF committee, both. Um, we have people here from the current DEPCONF from Taiwan. We have people here from the next DEPCONF, from DEPCONF 19 in Curitiba, Brazil. We have people here that have organized uh, events before, so kind of knowledge in the room from previous DEPCONFs, and we have people here which are prospects and running bids for the DEPCONF 20, where we currently have, depending on how we count, between four to six bids running, which is very nice, and we hope that one of them matures into a great DEPCONF in 2022. Um, I'll hand over to Jonathan because he prepared slides. He's the most organized of all of us. So he's doing an introduction of us as well as part of the slide deck. Yeah, I thought I'd do some introduction because we don't speak often at DEBCONF, which is a problem. Um, so I thought I'd do a quick introduction because DEBCONF has so much history. Mm. Keep going. And um, yeah, lots of things have changed over the years. So I thought uh, let's get an introduction of what DEBCON structure looks like at the moment. So we have the big all-inclusive DEBCON team, which is inclusive of the local team and hello, testing. Is that good? Okay. And then we have a DEBCON committee, which is made out of uh, um, five people, which I'll get to in a second. Uh, so we don't have any more DEBCON chairs like we had in the past. That caused a bunch of problems and politics and we went with a simpler structure. And DebConf is now also fully integrated into Debian. So in the past, DebConf used to be basically a, a separate organization uh, to Debian with its own governance and own structures. Um, and we've also done away with the concept of a local team versus a global team. We just have a DebConf team, and the DebConf local team that handles most of the local issues is part of that. Thanks. <laughs> So who's the DebConf committee? That's me, uh, my um, Daniel, uh, Lucas Nosbaum couldn't be here, neither could Didier, and this is Stefano Rivera. So we're a very, very white male um, group. We want to be more diverse. We'll look at trying to change that in the future, getting more different kind of people on, on the DebConf committee. It's a problem that we completely acknowledged, um, but we've had so many problems to deal with especially early on in the formation of the DebConf committee that uh, we couldn't immediately focus on that. But long term, we do hope to fix that. So there's a delegation set up at the beginning of last year. Um, basically, there's three points that the DebConf committee is responsible for making final decisions about who will organize DebConf as defined in the bid process, take long-term responsibility for DebConf, both during preparations for a particular year's conference with the team they selected, and in ensuring in the longer term that conferences continue to be successful and positive for Debian, and advise the DPL on decisions that are not delegated, such as the final DebConf budget approval. Uh, if you go to the actual delegation, you can see some more details on what each of those points mean, but I'm not going to go through that in this session. And yeah, then we can go ahead and buff. So uh, the Gobby server is at gobby.debian.org, and the note is called DCC underscore buff. Okay, Bog. use your imagination. No, don't create bog, please. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. Um, uh, kind of we, we created a bit of a structure there to um, get us all talking. Um, I think the most important thing currently is that we collect some feedback from the DEPCONF 18 team to get us started. Like how you perceive the interaction with the global team, how you in perceive the interaction with the committee, what, what you liked about it, what are things that we should improve upon. Now we need a mic for those people. Or you just go there. Should be more mics if someone wants to get them. I, I'd, I'd like to ask people to keep the feedback positive. We have a feedback alias for the negative feedback that we can read later. Yeah, I, I think we should keep it, you know, reasonable. But I am not against any type of critique. So, and I'm gonna pass the microphone you know around. Exactly. You know, the thing is, let's be honest with each other, but stay polite. So. And also try and keep the session moving. Right. Correct. She done it once to have the phone too. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Where? Yeah. 
Actually, I found that uh, uh, the budgeting, the budgeting part is uh, sometimes uh, I have I, maybe I'm not doing something uh, creative, so I need I I uh, declarative, so I need I mean need some help from the someone who did the uh, budgeting before. So uh, like I maybe I almost give up budgeting stuffs <laughs> during the with the negotiation with them be. I'm sorry about this. <laughs> no worries, but I think you got help from Poyo in setting it up, and Hector yeah. has taken over uh, a part of the stuff when you when you were out and uh, yeah. done it here. Uh, do you feel you are able to help close the books and finalize the um, stuff in letter? Will that work? Or I was doing I was doing the I was trying to do the uh, finalizing the budgeting yesterday night yesterday evening. So. Uh, Try, um, oh, I, I was some, somehow find some uh, discrepancies between the budget, between our cash, our, our cash we have. Okay. So um, I'm still I'm still working on it. Okay. And uh, but and uh, um, budgeting side uh, another another difficulties on our budgeting side is that we have for we have four agencies that like we can we can resort to. So that's a specific a here in, uh, perhaps for the people on the stream or who don't know this, that's a specific here in Taiwan. We have funds from various government agencies, which are all um, yeah, partially, marked. sorry? Yeah, marked. Yeah, which are partially bound to having specific types of expenditure, and we need to provide specific types of documents to yes. access all of those expenditures. So it makes budgeting way, way, way more complex than Is if you had just the first one time in, in depth comp before? Yes. Okay. Other governments are not as generous as yours. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Thanks to Taiwan. Absolutely. Thanks to me, Taiwan. <laughs> okay, my, my, my question is simple, just about the, the number of people, participants, estimation, and the things. Is in, uh, because we need some uh, more accurate estimation for the fundraising, uh, especially for the government, because they always need uh, some numbers. And also, yeah, so that means uh, I, I like to request that if uh, you have any uh, re registered info, uh, I mean, in, in the system, uh, it's better to provide earlier. Uh, so that makes us easier. So I, th I think the suggestions we had for numbers turned out pretty much accurate. We were saying 250 to 300, and that's what happened. More like 400, yes. But so the question of how do we count the people that walked in on open day and did not register, so. I, yeah, I think, I the think statistics the, I've the got stuff with, 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 date, with access to wafer data is a problem because there's basically uh, you and OLSD that have the, the access. The statistics page is visible to everybody. Yeah, but that's brand new. So that wasn't existing, which is what uh, the folks here are saying when they were trying to figure out numbers. You, and you don't have groups. registration data at the point that you're trying to figure out numbers. You're going to figure out numbers based on previous DebConfs. And this is what they did, yes. Yeah. All right, other feedback. Let's keep it moving. Uh, I think the problem we have is that we, I, I, I did not announce the day like correctly for the visa process. And the problem is that some people need bursary to come here, so when they bursary got approved, they need the visa support, especially for eco, but the eco deadline is already passed, so they mm -hmm. cannot come here, because the deadline seems to be, I think I didn't do it very well about the deadline that you need to do, send me all the information before the day so that I can send to the information to government to help to get an eco. So that sometimes causes a problem, <laughs> yeah. For yeah. some people, they cannot come to Taiwan because of this. Nicola, you want to comment? Uh, um, yeah, this one works. Um, I think one of the things that could be improved for next year is having the global team be more involved earlier in the budget process because the budget process was basically languishing for months and then at the point of the approval process uh, there were some questions and there was kind of a panic about the questions that were asked during the acceptance process of the budget and this delayed for one more month um, so I hope we can do better next year uh, around this topic and then having the budget earlier means having less uh, 
issues with the rest of the process. But that also means we would be able to award the bursaries earlier, because as soon as you have the budget yeah. frame, you can do the right. bursary process. Yes. We, right. okay. we should try and get the budget six months earlier next year. Right. Yep. Okay. Have you heard, Curitiba? <laughs> <laughs> oh, make sure you re don't pack all the people into each dorm room when there's empty rooms right across. Fill them up evenly, otherwise people will have to have bad experience with fresh air, etc. So uh, um, even if it costs more air conditioning cars to have people in their in own individual rooms, if they look across and see there's plenty of empty rooms, they're all packed up in the, the four. Uh, okay, thank you. So before we move on too much, I just want to say to Shanzu, don't be too hard on yourself about the visas. Because a month before DEBCON, we, st we really started telling people, don't wait for the e-code, go to your embassy and apply for your visa. And some people just didn't want to listen. And I think that's really their fault and not yours. Uh, the, the other one is that we probably, for every task, we need at least two members to involve. Because when I'm in the hospital, someone needs to take my job and they don't know <laughs> nothing about it. So I still need to send message to oh, you need to do that. You need to this is a lesson for future DebConf bids as well. You really need a large local team so you can survive people. Real life happens to people. But he looked very healthy, so you know, it was completely <laughs> unexpected. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, we got some catering issue during this period. And uh, thanks Daniel and uh, Professor Huang and the uh, catering vendor, uh, we are working together to solve this issue. So. The next thing is uh, we need to figure out the procedure and the process in the campus of how to um, provide the spatial uh, food within the campus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because there are many concerns on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's definitely something, and I think the Curitiba team already knows this, and it's good for all the other bits. We have complicated food situation because we have people with um, vegetarian and vegan um, food. So that's pretty normal in some areas of the world, but difficult in others. And then we have, because of the amount of people that attend, all types of allergies. There's only like one or two people, but because they die if they eat peanuts or so, you need to make sure that either the food does not contain this for sure, or that it is specifically labeled. And this is obviously always a lot of work. Delip. Yeah, I Early uh, in the fall and winter, I think I saw a dynamic where the local team was just forming still and hadn't really been convening formal meetings yet. And the global team really didn't have anything it really needed to do yet. And sometimes the dynamic in those meetings was a local team looking to global team for facilitation or moderation help but global team was busy with their own lives and the time, the time, the distance, the time differences were so great. We had to meet at inconvenient hours, many of us. So I saw this dynamic where people on local team were being told, hurry up, you could do this between meetings, you know, hurry up, this is too long a meeting for us. And, but we, I was kind of part of local team in a way from a distance. I think we were looking for more leadership help from org team than org team had available to give us. There's actually a construct in the delegation which is we as a DevConf committee should be nominating a mentor for each team. Ah. And I'm working on this for Curitiba. Um, in their section I will ask them whether they want to recommend anybody or they can do this to me afterwards. I've asked people already. Um, so I hope we're able to fulfill this. The problem is always finding the person. Because the thing in Debian is, you know, you, you, you can get ranks and titles as many as you want, but you need to have the time. So we often have a disconnect between the people which are available and would be willing to do it, and the people that we would need to fulfill the job. So that's yeah, so I completely would true for this position. So I would suggest for Curitiba that you think about how you would like to facilitate your meetings, because if you just wait for the global team to facilitate your meetings, you might find they don't have the time for that topic. And 
I, I think there also, think about. there also isn't enough time in those meetings to get into all the details on every topic. So topics have to be broken out and discussed outside the meetings. The meetings have everybody in the room, so it's useful for everybody to get an overview of what's going on and how things are. But we don't all have time to... The meeting's an hour long. You can only cover so much stuff in an hour. There's still a stage issue here that when a local team is new, they, they can't always delegate everything. They still need this time to have these formal meetings to talk together. I think that was that early stage that I'm referring right. to. Yeah. All right. One more call behind you from Holger. You're not actually local team, so keep it short, please. Um, from, from as an outside observer from these meetings last year, I found the meetings too often. And I think this might have contributed to a view, your view that the global team was busy with their life. So I think having meetings that was too often and a general comment, or, um, I think it's normal that people want to learn new things and make new mistakes. And what that frustrated me over the years, I've done DEPCON for very many years and I've seen many mistakes, but it's normal that these mistakes repeat because we, not, we change the team and the location every year. And so it's a very challenging setting. And what a, just the idea I caught that maybe it would be good for every to have no job with just a single person responsible, always try to have two people involved in any job, because then you can also discuss with them. That's completely a no-brainer, but the factual issue is that sometimes, no, we more often have the situation that we can't find a single person for a job <laughs> than find two for a job, so. All right, so, Chidani, last call. Oh. Uh, make sure next year's day trip people know that 90% of the participant won't sign up until the last minute. I, we, we did warn you about this. No, no, we didn't. <laughs> I did, many times. No, I you didn't. You weren't too late. It was too late. <laughs> I was just contributing to the sarcasm. I just, um, I just want to reply to Holger first before. Yes, please. Um, so regarding the problems that we see every year that uh, that's the same mistakes that always happen. Um, one of the things I'd like to do is create a, a Git repository for all the feedback so that we can anonymize all the feedback that we get and uh, keep logs of all the things that go wrong everywhere, uh, at least of the feedback we get every DevConf, and then really, really lay that well to every new local team that comes along so that we really can try to get the same problems that we see every year eliminated. Um, so that's maybe a long-term thing that will get better as it goes along, but uh, definitely something I'm planning to work on. I'd, I'd be happy to help get this done for this cycle, yeah. because it's like, very needed. Can we have it some kind of document who, uh, where the local team now can write what it was planning that it goes wrong and uh, what it happened what it, what they are planning that it didn't it was, was not possible to execute. For example, I someone uh, told us that the idea was uh, launch in many restaurants here, but it, it was not it was not possible. Something like that. So you can we can we can read and know what we 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 have to to what happened here, right? It's good to know what happened here. Because uh, we need, I, I believe all of us need to have this explanation. If someone else asks, ah, why this, this kind of thing uh, didn't happen, we can answer what, what happened uh, in that situation. I think it's good to publicize something like that. All right, just because they have the micro already, um, there's one thing, as I said earlier, I'll just repeat it um, because it's in the Gobi uh, at that point in time. Um, formally, we should appoint a mentor, a person that would be your contact to the DevCon committee, to the global organization. I'm looking for somebody who has experience over multiple DevConfs, so she or he knows how to navigate uh, the structure and kind of makes things easier for you. And because of the language issue, it would be preferential if that person was speaking Portuguese and English. Um, so if you have any recommendations, send them to me. I'm working on this. Uh, the usual suspects you can assume I already asked. So it needs to be somebody that I probably don't know and have not met here during DevConf 18, right? Um, 
Otherwise, I, I'm happy to receive the same nominations again, but I already asked them. The other question, um, it, I think it's important that the next local team can have access on a wafer. For example, uh, we, it's important that we give access for, from, to someone from the next, the next local team ha, that this person has access to front desk staffs because right. even they can't use the they can't they can't they can't change the the things there but they can look and they know what has happened i tried to 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 have this kind of access before but i i couldn't and i think it's important to uh, with some some kind of uh, precautions that someone can a, a local team can access everything if it's possible what would be really helpful is if one of you could get onto the local desk team, because on the front desk team, because I assume you're going to want to have one of you at the front desk during the DevConf. But I don't think any of you were working with front desk this year. Yes. So Natty said for the stream, we had a little bit of practice, but not a huge amount. Uh, personally, I think uh, we are ready to, to deal with the front, of the front, front desk because you had three many DevConfs in Brazil and you had a lot of software-free events. So uh, I, what I see de here, it's not so different that we have there. Sh sure, but it's just how this front desk works and yeah. who what the people are get working well with them. That, yeah. you know, what is team. different is the system, right? That we, I didn't know the system, the way for it and, uh, and myself. And the team. Uh, yeah, in the team. There's something we failed to do this year, now, now that you mentioned this, uh, that every year in the past we have tried for local team members, uh, for future year team members to join the local team members in all of the tasks of organization. And uh, I mean, by, uh, by the time we decide on the next, uh, on the next uh, DevConf location, we should really try to integrate them as core organizer f uh, for Brazil, because it, it really helps transferring knowledge. But uh, you said that you think that you failed about that? Uh, I mean, we as the global team failed uh, to really pull you in. I mean, you were present at several meetings and that, but in the end, as you said, you, you didn't engage in many of the processes because you were not part of uh, of uh, well the uh, of the many teams. So during this conference, you should have been running as much as they did, right? For example, one, one information that we'd like to have is what kind of special foods the attendees ask the in on the systems. We we only saw this information when it was uh, on the it, it be on the website. And you, we are trying to talk with uh, our, our restaurant in Brazil, and they ask me, oh, what kind of special food you need? I, which I, I don't know very well. I would like to see what was asked here, to have idea to we, ask. In, we in can give you the break, the same breakdown we gave the caterers here. It will be similar, because it's like the, the people that have these special food issues are frequent DevConf attendees, so yeah. the list will be very similar for you um, as it is for us this year here. Basically, we can give you access to everything, except we don't want to give you raw access to the machines if we can help it, because there's bursaries data there that we'd like to keep limited to as few people as possible. But we, you need the data you need, and we'll make sure you get it. Okay. Uh, one thing I have to confess is that I, I or myself, as, as myself or as the DevConf 18 team, takes too much work by ourselves. So I believe that the uh, next DevConf, we can, the local team should do partly by them, partly by the local team themselves and the next DevConf 20 team and together. So the next so DevConf 20 team can know what should they do and, uh, and uh, pass, the, pass their stuff, pass their knowledge to the next DevConf. Yeah. So we don't know who the 20 team is yet, but when they appear, it would be great if people from them would work in the fi finance team, sp um, fundraising, ideally catering, front desk, video would be great, network would be lovely. All of these things can 
use people from a future teams working in them. Right, but the, the problem is when we have a resource constraint. Oh yeah, it it's that, 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 so, that's yeah. an ideal, it's not probably achievable. I think it's important for everyone to know that uh, event organizing is one of the most stressful jobs on the planet because people are more complicated to coordinate than airplanes, so air traffic control is less stressful. Um, so it's not just that the information doesn't get written down from previous years, it's that whole human beings have dropped out over the stress and illnesses. We've had, I think this team has done very well, but two people were very, very hurt by the time the first day started. So taking care of each other, be nice to each other, take care, <laughs> uh, I think is really crucial. And some of that carryover in future years might improve if we're not losing important Debian people because of the stress of Debacom. Right. It is not necessary that every year we find a burnout or something like this, absolutely. Also, yes. if at any time you feel overwhelmed or stressed or that there's not enough hours in a day, that latter one might happen already, but if at any time it gets a bit too intense, um, raise your hand somewhere, like message the DebConf committee or the DebConf team list, or shout an RSC, just make it clear that you need help, and people will rally to try to find you that help, even if they can't find you, help you directly. Yes, to add to that, um, we can't help you if you don't tell us that you need help, so in order to get our support, please inform us. Helen? Yeah, I just would like um, to add, maybe this was already comment actually. Uh, it would be nice to have a page somewhere, a wiki page, like front de based on Teams front desk, video, network, uh, fundraising, things with some checklists, like you need to uh, check uh, the, the previous well, the for, for the food, for the constraints, and um, for or for the video, you need to check the infrastructure. If the uh, university allows you, check the law, check with the director, check with uh, if you have some certain kinds of equipment. Uh, so we, yeah. So I guess we have some kind of uh, page, some, but it's it's not really that. Organized. Yeah, those checklists don't is, exist yet, and they would be great to have. We're, we're starting then with, with them. The, the first one that we're starting off is a shopping list, because shopping was a mess this DebCon. <laughs> um, so uh, on, a Debcon, on a Debian wiki, because we're moving everything from the DebConf wiki over to the Debian wiki, so that we can deprecate that old um, wiki that's still running on DebConf infrastructure, we'll have lots of lists and checklists and things that, uh, you know, at least before the conference you can see. What do we look like? And if there's something missing, at least you can add it again for the next DevConf and improve over time, which is um, okay, one so thing. Just not for, not just for equipment, right? Like yeah. verify if these okay. and remember. What, what, I, what I have requested is that if the stuff is moved over, we basically make this into a DevConf manual. So there's like one document that says like per, you know, type of work per, per area of concern, Actually, this is the stuff. So. <laughs> well, no, the, 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 problem, <laughs> the problem is very simple. Just migrating shit over doesn't work. So this is why I requested that it gets sorted. And we have somebody that wants to try and sort it, so you know. I'm I think you're to trying to turn to one problem, two problems into one problem. Oh, uh, yes, and make it somebody else's. Yes. That's the trick. <laughs> That's <laughs> not a good approach. And also maybe a suggestion on the number of people for each role, or how many roles uh, do you suggest? Uh, because, for instance, I, I would like in the future to organize uh, maybe a mini DevConf in Italy, and uh, I don't know anything about uh, the current organization. So, uh, also, how many people uh, do you suggest for uh, making uh, the different things? Mm -hmm. Thank you. I, I want to add just a bit uh, there, a mini DevConf, well, it is similar to DevConf in some aspects, but fortunately, it's way much simpler. Of course, you can do a mini DevConf of 10 people, or you can do a mini DevConf of 100 people. But the, the issues faced are completely different than a full scale. <laughs> okay. Um. Holger, then Zidani. Um, 
And then I would like to move over to uh, further questions from uh, the DevConf 19 team before we go too much into. If you've never done events. a mini DevConf or a similar event, I suggest to really cut it down, not do f too much food, let people organize their food, don't organize accommodation, just concentrate on a venue and maybe talks, and really keep it simple. Yes, and Holger, Holger organized a very good DebConf in Hamburg, so in case you Many plan to do this, Hamburg. grab him and you know, squeeze him and you, you will get information out or something else. There's many people who do mini DebCons. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, to Danny. Oh, so currently, the, each um, day trip leader has to pay for the day trip on their, out of their own money, and then they get the money back later. So that seems kind of weird. And then another problem I have is we can edit the times of events on the wiki, but then the corresponding part on the website, we can't edit the times on that schedule. So we have to, it takes a couple days to get it okay, fixed. Let me answer the schedule. first of this. The, the speci special situation in Taiwan is that the DebConf wasn't paid for by the people that went on it. So this is a very special situation because all other DebConfs, people pay their own day trips. But here we have government funding, which we can only use for this, so we use it for this. And this is why you know, people had to put out the money and get either the money directly back or via um, compensation from OCF or from SPI. So it's but a special situation. It didn't have to be done by that. It could have been that your money was fronted by DebCon. Yes, this is, this is just the way it worked the, out. We, we also allowed advances, so that was fine. The, uh, the second thing, sorry, the second thing was on wafer and yeah. the incapability to really do like the ad hoc talks in this currently. Was that question about ad hoc talks? No, it's just like day, um, the day trip time, I wanted to change it. And then the open day time, I want to change it. And I don't want to edit the whole thing. I don't want, because I could easily accidentally erase everything. I don't want to do that. I just want to be able to sync the, my wiki edits with the times on that website. So, I, mean, hey. I don't recall the situation. Sorry, I don't have well, the details. Usually, I have to ask Gunnar to fix it for me, and I would rather be able to do it instantly myself next time. I mean, if there was next time. That's slightly outside the scope of DevCon yeah. committee. Okay. Maybe I suggest you send an email about that to feedback well, at, at DevCon. Okay, and then my next problem is those air conditioner cards. You really got to give people two cards because otherwise the first one's going to run out in the middle of the night. This was okay. a specific thing to DevCon 18. I know, but you got to remember. And then the food labels are a big failure. Nobody woke up on time to even put the food labels mostly. So. All right, thanks. Um, all right, DebConf 19, do you have any questions which we should either answer here if we can or take away and get you answers in writing? Uh, yes, the first question we put on the list is uh, about shipping, shipping equipment. So we talk about that with some people. Uh, Where is it? And we would like to check how it was done in our other <laughs> DebConfs. Uh, and Actually, we talked with someone of the possibility to have some other, some company as UPS or some shipping company as a sponsor, but instead of they giving us money, um, they could ship things from us. But I'd like to know how it was done in others. Yeah. Um, so the shipping was done by me, so I guess I can answer that. Um, what we do is we do temporary import paperwork uh, to get the stuff inside the country and outside the country, uh, which is called an ATA carnet. And Brazil entered the ATA carnet system for the Olympics two years ago. So it should be possible to do this again next year. Um, for the actual logistics, uh, sorry. So we don't oh. have to pay import duties when we bring it okay. in and import duties when we take it out. Yes. Um, the problem with going through shipping companies is that uh, so most of the like companies that you would use as a, as an individual would not be able to do the temporary import paperwork. So you pay VAT when you enter a country, and you pay VAT when you enter the next country. So you pay twice the VAT on stuff that you own um, already. Um, We've looked into doing this through professional channels. Uh, and and it we was settled for half OLSD still do it, so there's a reason. And it was way more expensive than just having extra luggage on someone. So 
If, if we went to double the amount of, of equipment to ship, we might consider external companies Sending again. Sending somebody along with OLSD. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. I don't know. Um, all right, yeah. so, so long question short, yes, logistics is a problem, but we think we know quite well how it works, have it under control. So if you have any issues, bug this person. If he's not available, we have no backup, because welcome, this is deck. So uh, do you need uh, any information from us, local team, to do some kind of research or something like that? Uh, I'm going to get in touch with the people who do the temporary import paperwork in France uh, to make sure whether they know how Brazil works. And then I come to you to confirm. Okay. And then we will need a, an a ship address to ship to and some, we'd, sorry, we're not shipping. <laughs> yep. Yeah. For sponsors who are shipping things, we will need an address to ship to and somewhere that it can be stored between being shipped and the start of DebConf. Right, and experience tells us that shipping things to Brazil can take two or three months to clear through customs. So that means you will have to have this really early. So like what we did here is like ship to the venue and make it arrive one week before the conference. It's very convenient for us, but will possibly not work in Brazil. So for you, you please need some space where you can store things and address, and we need to announce this to our sponsors three months, four months before they actually need the stuff on site because of the peculiarities of so dealing I'm with Brazilian customers. <laughs> <laughs> Let's please not. <laughs> All right. The second question there was money. Are we going to that now? Getting money in the country. Yeah, well, there, there is the, I, I think getting money into Brazil is really, really easy. Getting money out of Brazil is really hard. Was it the other way around? All oh, right, okay. Um, yeah, we need to, like one of the things which we need to be doing with you now is like what legal structure do we use for the DEPCONF 19. So for example, here in Taiwan, we promoted OCF Taiwan, which is an existing organization that does support for free software into a Debian trusted organization. There's a process around this, which basically runs through um, the uh, Debian structure and gets finally approved by, by our DPL. And uh, then this organization is allowed to hold money or other assets in trust for Debian. Um, maybe we need to do something similar in Brazil, or maybe we don't need to do this and keep the finance flow mostly outside of Brazil. You know, those are the things we, we need to be discussing uh, when you have, you know, your estimation of how many attendees and how you want to provide food and stuff like this. Because basically, the, the only cost you have locally is the venue, the food, and incidentals for, you know, front desk and stuff like this. So those are the things which you need to pay locally. If you find sponsors that cover it and pay locally, the rest can be kept inside SPI Inc., which is the legal entity in, in the US that keeps most of the Debian assets. If you have the issue like we had here in Taiwan, that the local sponsors were not providing sufficient funds, then we start to get money flows and then we need to see how these actually can work out. As far as I can tell, uh, people from SPI who were involved when DebConf was last in Brazil are still around and still have some like idea of how things work, and they seem keen to get involved as well and make sure that everything works. So it should be okay. Um, I saw on the presentation about the local team versus global team. If you had some kind of stress on the next two months, we all can solve this stress with a soccer game, right? <laughs> so we can do a local team versus global team on a soccer game <laughs> in Brazil. <laughs> all right. I'll be the goalie. I'm not used for anything okay. else. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Uh, we would like to to have in Brazil some kind of uh, legacy uh, from the Debian community. We, d we don't like, we, we would like that the Debian community goes, go to Brazil and go out and no, no, no kind of legacy you can have there, uh, there even uh, outside Debian. So we are thinking how the Debian community can do something in Brazil, in Curitiba, especially that we can say, ah, that guys, that, that people, help the, us here, even outside the community there. I don't know what, but if someone have idea 
we will receive all kind of suggestions about that. Uh, someone gave me a, a simple example. Ah, we can we can make a discussion of someone in, uh, outside the, in the university or outside to talk in English, for example. We have uh, uh, in the community people that speak English very well, so we can uh, make some conversations in English about everything, something like that. It's a uh, a simple example, but if you have something, please say to us. I think one of the ideas is like every year we have a different position on invited speakers. Um, so this year there were very little invited speakers. Um, the question is like, would you want to use the opportunity that you bring the full DEPCONF to Curitiba yes. to motivate stellar speakers from elsewhere in the world to join us and that this way also you know, create interest beyond the Debian people which migrate there anyways because you do a DEPCONF into the wider open source community and free software community which exists in Brazil. So that would be yeah. an idea. We, we, re we really would like that if, for example, the video team uh, leave a legacy there, how to work with video, audio, everything. It will be very nice for us. Not, for, not for only for local team, but really the people in Curitiba that like this kind, this kind of stuff. Maybe during Dep Camp we could offer a one day how to do video with the type of hardware and software our team is using yeah, workshop sure. and invite everybody who wants to do local meetups and tape them on video to play around with the stuff and learn how to use it. So Tumbleweed is known to log hardware from the US and bring it along for people. So you know we've done talks about this at DepConf before, we can do it again. Yeah, sure. So, so what I like about your DebConf team especially is, well, every year we have the problem that uh, at the DebConf team, the DebConf local team especially, wants to have this big fancy open day where they're going to invite 500 people from the public. And then what actually happens is we end up with around 50 Debian people hearing an intro of what free software means. And uh, that's just uh, kind of frustrating and boring for everyone. So I'm glad that you decided to rather do away with um, an open day and just have a track that will be interesting for locals. And I think that's a great, uh, that, that's already a great um, puzzle piece of establishing your legacy. Because people in general don't care about big, fancy, flashy things. They care about the basics being real good. Uh, can they, do they have a nice bed to sleep in? Do they have food to eat? Um, once all of that is taken care of, all the basics, then DebConf will be great. There's no doubt about it. And I think keeping it simple um, is a really good idea. And what I've really liked about your team so far in the meeting we had the other night is how you do tend to keep things really simple and good. And I think that's going to build up to being your legacy in Brazil. And I hope that if you pull it off, future DebConfs will follow that example as well. Sure. And so after this, there's virtually nearly nothing we can add anymore, right? So um, I'd like to, any more question? No, no, no. okay, I'd like to thank you for attending the BOF. Uh, we are available, debconfcommittee at uh, lists.debian.org if you need to write something to us in private, otherwise use the team channel, we do read that as well. Um, use the RSC uh, team channel to chat to us and we'd be happy to participate in you know, any local meetings as long as they're in English, because otherwise we probably are no use. Natty is waving her arm, you want something? I was, saying, um, I was saying, are we going to open the floor to questions from bidders for 20? Time has time. unfortunately okay, run mind. out, so. Um, we, at least I'm still here today, I think Tumbleweed, you're here still. I'm here tomorrow. tomorrow. High voltage, you're here so tomorrow as well. So, you know, grab us, please, if you have any questions. Um, and please get us a great DebConf 22. We're looking forward to the wiki pages of the bits. Thank you. And thank you very much for the local team this year. We could learn a lot with you. Thank you very much for your hard work and great work. Thank Applause, you. Applause, please.